Hi everyone, it's Professor Primington, and today we're going to talk about trigonometric identities. So previously we studied graphical and geometric properties of trigonometric functions. Now we're going to talk about the algebraic properties of simplify and factor expressions involving trigonometric functions, and then also solve any equations that involve trigonometric functions. So in this video we're going to verify fundamental trigonometric identities, and also to simplify trigonometric expressions using algebra and the identities. So recall that an equation is a statement that actually relates two mathematical expressions and they are equal to one another. So the following examples are equations. x plus 2 equals 5. This is what's called a conditional equation because only one specific value for x, x equals 3, will actually make the equation true. The quantity x plus 1 all squared is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. This is what's called an identity because if you take the left side of the equation, x plus 1 all squared, and you actually use the FOIL method to actually multiply x plus 1 times x plus 1, you will get x squared plus 2x plus 1. These two statements are equivalent for all x values. So this is what's called an identity. It's true for all real numbers x. And then also we had an identity that we talked about earlier, sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to 1. This is also an identity. It's what's called the Pythagorean identity. It's true for all real numbers x. An identity is an equation that actually is true for all values of the variable or variables. In particular, the last two are called identities. However, the first equation, x plus 2 equals 5, is not an identity. It's only true for one particular solution. So in this next theorem, fundamental trigonometric identities, we've already seen previously several basic trigonometric identities, and they are listed as follows. So we had what's called the reciprocal identities. Cosecant of x is the reciprocal of the sine function, so cosecant of x is 1 divided by sine of x. Secant of x, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so secant of x is equal to 1 divided by cosine of x. Cotangent of x, cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent function, so cotangent of x is equal to 1 divided by tangent of x. Then we also had tangent of x is the ratio of the sine function divided by the cosine function, so tangent of x is sine of x divided by cosine of x. Cotangent of x is the ratio of the cosine function divided by the sine function, so cotangent of x is cosine of x divided by sine of x. We also had three Pythagorean identities, so sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal, always equal to 1 as long as the argument of the sine squared and the cosine squared functions are x. Tangent squared of x plus 1 is equal to secant squared of x, and that's a result of taking sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1 and dividing both sides of the equation by cosine squared of x. And then also cotangent squared of x plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared of x, and that was a result of taking the Pythagorean identity sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1 and dividing both sides of the equation by sine squared of x. We also had the even and odd properties for the sine, cosine, and tangent functions. Sine was an odd function, so sine of the opposite of x is equal to the opposite of sine of x. Cosine of negative x is equal to cosine of x, and that's because cosine is an even function. And tangent of negative x is the opposite of tangent of x, and that's because tangent was an odd function. And we also have the following six what's called phase shift identities. Sine of pi over 2 subtract x is the same as cosine of x. Cosine of pi over 2 subtract x is also the same as sine of x. Tangent of pi over 2 subtract x is equal to the cotangent function of x. Cotangent of pi over 2 subtract x is equal to the function tangent of x. Secant of pi over 2 subtract x is equal to cosecant of x. And cosecant of pi over 2 subtract x is equal to secant of x. So now that we have all these basic or fundamental trigonometric identities, we're actually going to now talk about how to simplify trigonometric expressions. Identities enable us to write the same expression in different but equivalent ways. It's often possible to rewrite a complicated trigonometric expression to actually be in terms of a simpler trigonometric expression. So keep in mind, if you want to simplify algebraic expressions, you actually use factoring, common denominators, and actually special product formulas to actually simplify those expressions. To simplify trigonometric expressions, we're going to use the same techniques together with the basic trigonometric identities that we just talked about. So example one, simplifying a trigonometric expression. Simplify the following trigonometric expressions. Number one, we have tangent of theta is divided by secant of theta. And we want to take this trigonometric expression and simplify it into a simpler one. Well, one thing that we can do is take the tangent function and also take the secant function and rewrite it to be in terms of sine and cosine. So convert the expression involving sine of theta and cosine of theta in both the numerator and denominator of this trigonometric expression. So take tangent of theta and rewrite it as a ratio of sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. And we also can rewrite secant of theta as 1 divided by cosine of theta. And so now you have two fractions that are being divided by one another. Take the numerator fraction, sine of theta divided by cosine of theta, and multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator fraction. So multiply by cosine of theta divided by 1, which is the reciprocal. And so now notice you have multiplication and you have cosine of theta divided by cosine of theta. That simplifies to just multiply by 1 or divided by 1. And so this just becomes sine of theta. So tangent of theta divided by secant of theta, that is equivalent to sine of theta. Let's try number two. 
This time, cosine of t plus tangent of t times sine of t. We're going to rewrite this trigonometric expression to be a simpler trigonometric expression using the identities. So cosine of t, we can't really do anything with that. But tangent of t, we can rewrite to be in terms of sine and cosine. So let's rewrite tangent of t as sine of t divided by cosine of t, and that's still being multiplied by sine of t. So cosine of t will stay the same, plus sine of t divided by cosine of t is tangent of t times sine of t. Well, now notice, you have cosine of t will just stay the same with, with the first term, but then the second term, you have sine of t times sine of t, that's sine squared of t divided by cosine of t. So now notice, you can rewrite these two terms to have a common denominator. The least common denominator, or LCD, is cosine of t, because the second fraction has a denominator of cosine of t. We're going to rewrite both terms of this expression to have cosine of t in the denominator as the common denominator. So if you rewrite the first term to be a fraction, it'd be cosine of t divided by 1. Well, that means you need to multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by cosine of t. So that means cosine of t times cosine of t becomes cosine squared of t, divided by 1 times cosine of t becomes cosine of t. Plus, the second fraction stays the same because it already has the common denominator. So sine squared of t divided by cosine of t. And so now, if you have common denominators, you can add the numerators and keep the denominator that's in common. So cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t is in the numerator, and the common denominator is cosine of t. Now notice what we have in the numerator. Sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t, the arguments of the sine squared and the cosine squared functions are the same, so it's actually a Pythagorean identity. Sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t is equal to 1. So the numerator just simplifies to 1, and so it's 1 divided by cosine of t, and we know that is the secant function because secant is the reciprocal of the cosine function. So cosine of t plus tangent of t times sine of t can be rewritten to be just secant of t. Let's try number three. This time we have sine of theta divided by one plus cosine of theta. Well, there's nothing that we can do to rewrite sine of theta and cosine of theta to be in terms of sine and cosine. They already are. Let's try multiplying by one in a creative way. Multiply by the conjugate of the denominator to both the numerator and denominator of this fraction. So the conjugate would be one subtract cosine of theta. So we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by one subtract cosine of theta, which is the conjugate of the denominator. So sine of theta times in the numerator, one subtract cosine of theta, and the denominator, one plus cosine of theta, multiplied by the conjugate, one subtract cosine of theta. The reason why we're multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator is because now the denominator is a difference of two squares. You have one plus cosine of theta times one minus cosine of theta. If you multiply using the FOIL method, one times one will give you one, 1 times negative cosine of theta will give you negative cosine of theta. Cosine of theta times 1 will give you positive cosine of theta. And cosine of theta times negative cosine of theta is negative cosine squared of theta. So notice that the middle two terms will cancel out, and you have 1 subtract cosine squared of theta in the denominator. Keep the numerator in factored form. You have sine of theta times the quantity, 1 subtract cosine of theta. And there's a reason why we want to keep this in factored form. That will be clear in a second. So we're going to keep the numerator sine of theta times 1 minus cosine of theta in parentheses divided by 1 subtract cosine squared of theta. Well, that actually is a Pythagorean identity again. Pythagorean identity was said that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. Well, if you solve for sine squared of theta, sine squared of theta is 1 subtract cosine squared, which is exactly what we have in the denominator. So the denominator is really sine squared of theta. So you have sine of theta times 1 minus cosine theta in parentheses, divided by sine squared using Pythagorean identity. And now you have a sine of theta that will cancel out from the, both the numerator and denominator because we're multiplying in the numerator, and we're also dividing by sine squared in the denominator. So one of the signs will cancel out, and you have 1 subtract cosine of theta in the numerator, and you'll have sine of theta in the denominator. And so sine of theta divided by 1 plus cosine of theta is equivalent to 1 subtract cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. So we've took the trigonometric expression and just rewrote it into a simpler trigonometric expression where you only have one term in the denominator rather than two terms. And then number four, let's try to rewrite sine of theta divided by cosine of theta plus cosine of theta divided by one plus sine of theta. So you have two different fractions involved. Let's try to rewrite these two fractions that have the same denominator. So find the common denominator of both fractions in the trigonometric expression. The least common denominator, or LCD, would be the product of the two denominators in the expression. So cosine of theta times the quantity 1 plus sine of theta. So we need to rewrite both fractions that have the same denominator now. So that means we need to multiply the numerator, sine of theta, by 1 plus sine of theta, which is the factor that's missing from the denominator in the first fraction. We have a cosine of theta, but we're missing the 1 plus sine of theta. So multiply by 1 plus sine of theta in the numerator, and also multiply by 1 plus sine of theta in the denominator. So now the denominator is the LCD. Now notice the second fraction. You have a cosine of theta, and you have a 1 plus sine of theta in the denominator. Well, notice in the second fraction, you have a 1 plus sine of theta in the denominator. You're missing the cosine of theta factor. So multiply the top and the bottom of the second fraction by cosine of theta, divided by cosine of theta. So cosine of theta times cosine of theta, divided by 1 plus sine of theta, 
times cosine of theta, the factor that's missing. So now let's simplify the numerators of both fractions. You have sine of theta times 1, that's sine of theta, plus sine of theta times sine of theta, that's sine squared of theta. So sine of theta plus sine squared of theta plus cosine theta times cosine theta is cosine squared of theta. And the denominator, the LCD, was cosine of theta times 1 plus sine of theta in parentheses. So let's keep the common denominator. And so now notice what you have in the numerator again. You have sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta for the last two terms. That's Pythagorean identity. That's equal to 1. And so in the numerator, you have 1 plus sine of theta. And the denominator is cosine of theta times the quantity 1 plus sine of theta. Well, notice you have a 1 plus sine of theta in the numerator and also in the denominator. So those two factors can cancel out because that's just 1. And so in the numerator, you have a 1 after you cancel out the common factor. And the denominator just simplifies the cosine of theta. 1 divided by cosine of theta, we've seen before, that's the secant function, because the secant function is the reciprocal of cosine of theta. And so sine of theta divided by cosine of theta plus cosine of theta divided by 1 plus sine of theta can be rewritten to be just secant of theta. Now that we talked about how to simplify trigonometric expressions, we're going to now prove trigonometric identities. Many identities follow from the basic trigonometric identities. In the examples that we're going to do, we're going to learn how to prove that a given trigonometric equation is actually a trigonometric identity. And in the process, we're going to see how to discover new identities involving trigonometric functions. Well, it's a rather simple process to determine whether a given equation is not an identity. If it's possible to find a value for the variable or variables where the equation is not true, then the equation is not an identity. It's not true for all values of the variable. And so this equation, sine of x plus cosine of x is equal to 1, it's not an identity. It's not true for all real numbers because if you replace x with pi over 4, you'll have sine of pi over 4 plus cosine of pi over 4. Well, sine of pi over 4 is square root 2 divided by 2. Cosine of pi over 4 is also square root 2 divided by 2. And so if you simplify the right side of the equation, Square root 2 divided by 2 plus square root 2 divided by 2 is 2 square root 2 divided by 2, and the 2's will cancel out and you'll just get square root of 2. Well, that's not equal to the right side of the equation. It's not equal to 1. And so we found a value for the variable x, pi over 4, where this statement is not true. So this is not an identity. So if we know a trigonometric equation is actually a trigonometric identity, we're going to transform one side of the equation into the other side of the equation using a series of steps each of which is actually also a trigonometric identity. So the guidelines for proving trigonometric identities. Step one, you pick one side of the equation and you write it down. Your goal is to transform one side of the trigonometric identity to be the other side of the trigonometric identity using algebra. And it actually is easier to start with a more complicated side of your trigonometric identity. Step two, use algebra and trigonometric identities to change the side that you started with. You bring any fraction expressions to have a common denominator. You can factor, and you also can use fundamental identities to simplify the expressions. And then step three, if you are ever stuck, you may find it helpful to rewrite all the functions to be in terms of sine and cosine, and then go from there. So one important note is that when you're trying to prove an identity, you do not perform the same operation on both sides of the equation because you don't know that both sides of the equation are actually equal. You're trying to prove that. You're trying to prove that the trigonometric expression on one side of the equation is equivalent to the other side of the equation. So that's why in step one, you always pick one side of the equation and you write it down and then you try to transform one side of the trigonometric identity to be equivalent to the other side of the trigonometric identity using a series of steps. However, what you can do is if you want to start with one side of the trigonometric identity, use a series of identities on one side of the equation, and then use a separate series of identities on the other side of the trigonometric equation, and arrive at an identity between the two sides of the original equation. So you can start with one side of the identity, use a series of steps to get to one point, and then stop, start the other side of the trigonometric identity, and then arrive where you actually stopped the left side of the trigonometric identity. So whenever you're applying a series of steps, only operations that are reversible can actually transform one side of the identity into the other side of the identity. In other words, the operations of squaring both sides of an equation is not reversible, since taking the square root on both sides of the equation will not result in the original equation. You have a plus or minus. So whenever you are proving a trigonometric identity, it's not like solving an equation for the value of the variable. Operations on both sides of the equation is not permitted when you're actually proving a trigonometric identity. So example two, we're going to prove an identity by rewriting the trigonometric expression on one side of the identity. Establish the following trigonometric identities by rewriting the equation in terms of sine and cosine. So number one, we're going to prove this identity. Sine of theta times the quantity cotangent of theta plus tangent of theta is equal to secant of theta. 
So choose the more complicated side of the trigonometric identity to start with. So it looks like it's going to be the left side of the trigonometric identity. So sine of theta times the quantity cotangent of theta plus tangent of theta. We're going to rewrite cotangent of theta and tangent of theta to be in terms of sine and cosine. So let's keep sine of theta on the outside of the brackets. Cotangent of theta we know is cosine of theta divided by sine of theta using the ratio of the cosine and sine functions. And we also know that tangent of theta can be rewritten as a ratio of the sine function divided by the cosine function. So tangent of theta will be replaced with sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. So now look what we have inside the square brackets. We have two different fractions that need to be added to one another. So let's try to find what is the least common denominator. Well, sine of theta is the denominator of one fraction, and cosine of theta is the denominator of the other fraction. The least common denominator is the product of the two denominators, sine of theta times cosine of theta. So let's rewrite both fractions that have this least common denominator. Cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. Notice you're missing the cosine of theta factor in the first fraction. So cosine of theta times cosine of theta makes it cosine squared of theta in the numerator. And the denominator becomes sine of theta times cosine of theta, which is the LCD. The second fraction, sine of theta divided by cosine of theta, is missing the sine of theta in the denominator. And so sine of theta times sine of theta gives you sine squared of theta in the numerator for the second fraction. And cosine of theta times sine of theta is now the LCD in the second fraction. So now let's bring these two fractions that have the same denominator to be added to one another by adding the numerators and keeping the LCD. So sine of theta will stay on the outside, square brackets, cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta is now the numerator added together, and the denominator, the LCD, stays the same, sine of theta times cosine of theta. Notice in the numerator of this square brackets, you have the Pythagorean identity again. Pythagorean identity said sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. That's exactly the numerator. And so that becomes 1 divided by sine of theta times cosine of theta. And the sine of theta is still on the outside. And now since you're multiplying sine of theta times this fraction, 1 divided by sine of theta times cosine of theta, the sine of theta is cancel out because you're multiplying or divided by 1. And so that becomes 1 divided by cosine of theta left over. And 1 divided by cosine of theta is equal to secant of theta, which is the right side of the identity. And so we have established the identity. We start with the left side of the identity. We use a series of algebra and also fundamental trigonometric identities. And we arrive with the right side of the equation, or identity, which was secant of theta. And so this is what's called proving a trigonometric identity. We start with one side of the identity, and we established, using a series of steps, the other side of the trigonometric identity. So this is an identity. Sine of theta times the quantity cotangent of theta plus tangent of theta is actually equivalent to secant of theta for all values of theta. So let's try one more. Number two, we have cosecant of theta subtract cotangent of theta on one side of the identity, and the other side of the identity is sine of theta divided by one plus cosine of theta. Well, in this case, it looks like both sides of the equation or identity are equally complicated. So we're going to choose one side of the identity that we can actually use more algebraic manipulation using identities, which would be the left side, because we know that cosecant of theta and cotangent of theta can be rewritten to be in terms of sine and cosine then we're actually going to be able to do more algebra. So cosecant of theta is 1 divided by sine of theta because it's the reciprocal of the sine function. And cotangent of theta is the ratio of cosine divided by sine. So cotangent of theta will be replaced with cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. So now notice these two fractions already have a common denominator, which is sine of theta. So we can make it one fraction. We have 1 subtract cosine of theta is in the numerator, and sine of theta is the common denominator. And so right now we have 1 subtract cosine of theta in the numerator, and sine of theta is the denominator. We want to establish that it's equal to sine of theta divided by 1 plus cosine of theta. Well, we've seen this kind of problem before when we were simplifying trigonometric expressions. Let's multiply by the conjugate of the numerator this time to both the numerator and denominator. So notice the numerator has two terms. Let's multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by the, its conjugate, which would be 1 plus cosine of theta. So multiply the top of the fraction, 1 minus cosine of theta times 1 plus cosine of theta, and take the denominator, sine of theta, and multiply by the conjugate of the numerator, which was also 1 plus cosine of theta. So we're multiplying by 1, but it's just multiplying by 1 in a creative way. So we're not changing the value of the trigonometric expression. We're just multiplying by 1. So now let's multiply the numerators together. 1 subtract cosine of theta times 1 plus cosine of theta. And then in the denominator, keep it in factored form, sine of theta times the quantity 1 plus cosine of theta. So now the numerator, we can multiply using the FOIL method. 1 times 1 will give us 1. 1 times cosine of theta gives us cosine of theta. Negative cosine of theta times 1 gives us negative cosine of theta. And negative cosine of theta times cosine of theta will give us negative cosine squared of theta. And again, keep the denominator in factored form sine of theta times the quantity 1 plus cosine of theta. 
The middle terms cancel out after we use the FOIL method, cosine of theta minus cosine of theta, that's zero. So we have one subtract cosine squared of theta in the numerator, and the denominator is sine of theta times the quantity one plus cosine of theta. So we've seen this identity in the numerator before. One subtract cosine squared of theta is really using Pythagorean identity. It's sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to one. Well, if you solve for sine squared of theta, that will give you one subtract cosine squared of theta. So the numerator is really sine squared of theta. So sine squared of theta in the numerator divided by sine of theta times the quantity one plus cosine of theta. Now notice you have a sine squared in the numerator and also a sine in the denominator that's being multiplied. So you can cancel out one of the sine of thetas. So you have sine of theta in the numerator divided by one plus cosine of theta will be left over. And this is exactly what we were trying to establish. The right side of the equation was sine of theta divided by one plus cosine of theta. So we've taken cosecant of theta, subtract cotangent of theta, We've used a series of algebra steps or trigonometric identities to establish that it's equivalent to the right side of this identity, sine of theta divided by one plus cosine of theta. So this is a good place to stop our video. Now we talked about how to verify fundamental trigonometric identities and also to simplify trigonometric expressions using algebra and the identities. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions about your work on homework for this section, please let me know as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we finish up our discussion on trigonometric identities.